Welcome to The Critique. Today I am bringing another episode of Afua Rose the Manslayer and her moist male supporters. Ugly, insecure and low self-esteem people like Afua Rose will typically spread division amongst light-skinned and dark-skinned people. They are hell-bent on having all the men look at them, not knowing because the inner person is ugly if it complements the outside ugliness. This debate goes into the who's and why's of light skin and dark skin division in the black community. We must put an end to this and I will continue to expose those like Afro Rose who perpetrates this division in our community. From one black sister to another, although I think I am much better looking than she is. Situation. about, you know, Jesse Williams would have even made this much noise if he's like, who gives a hell if he was light-skinned? He said what he said and he had a platform to say, cool, but then, you know, you get, well, he was light-skinned, you know, if he was dark-skinned, and then, I mean, if he was dark-skinned and he had a platform to say it, and he didn't say it, that's shame on him. You get what I'm saying? I think the colorism is there because we we have that stigma, whether really Willie Lynch being true or not, it's the stigma of, you know, you know, everyone wants a pretty light-skinned girl with the curly hair or whatever. Or if you're, you're light-skinned, you know, you 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 get you get places that a dark-skinned person. I mean, same argument happened when Obama got elected. Like, if, if Obama was Michelle's, you know, complexion, what if he got what if he got elected? You know, and it, and it's all it all is always there because you know it's hard not to connect it to the colonials and white folks. But it's like we subsist in this country with them, and that's what stems from. And so in our little caucuses, we can discuss it, but it's the root to it, and we're not the root to it. We're just, you know, dealing with the, with the aftermath of it, and we're fighting each other over something we didn't even create. You know, we're all mixed up because of, you know, the, the colonization. Like, we were just dark people. I'm not saying compared to the 60s to now, I feel like obviously there was a point in certain time when we did move backward, but I think today, at least in the last like five years, I've never seen so many women that look like me that are so proud to be like me. Like again, growing up, I was like one of the few girls like, no, it's okay to be dark skinned. Most other girls were so, you know, they were the quiet ones in the room because they didn't want to be called the African booty scratcher. They didn't want to, you know, get, oh, you black as tar or, you know what I mean? Nowadays, I look around and I see these girls and like, Young high school, elementary school, they are so proud. I'm like, you a girl, come here, you a beautiful girl. They're like, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I can't give you the flip side of that. And then, I've never, again, we didn't have social media when I was growing up, but now that social media is a platform, I see so many black girl magic posts and memes and, you know, us being portrayed as queens. And I think we're moving. We're so moving in the right I direction. I see both Destiny's Child came out right now instead of when they came out. Kelly Rowland would be Beyonce. I don't know but, if she has a voice. No, she definitely does. Beyonce didn't have a voice when she first came out either. She sounded like a belly goat from Kelly, Beyonce. Kelly, Kelly, y'all gonna hate me. They Kelly, hate Kelly, me. Kelly, but Beyonce Kelly, didn't Kelly. have a voice when they first came out. Her oh, voice was shaking. That's, that's, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing. So yeah, but, she did. but 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 anyway, yeah, but but color. But but right now, <laughs> Kelly Rowland could be Beyonce. When when back uh, then she could have had the opportunity. Right now she could have the opportunity. Exactly. Okay. But we can say the same thing with Peter Tosh and Bob Marley because Bob was a light skinned one and right. that's why they pushed him more. And exactly, and that's yeah. what I'm saying, the same thing. So now I feel like we are moving forward because I do feel like in the black community a dark skinned person can step forward and, and take that spot. Like I feel like Kelly Rowland could be Beyonce if it started from now. But I feel like when Destiny's Child came out, Beyonce got pushed. Because of her complexion and because of the way that she looked, yeah. because of the because she would appeal more not even to America. It's not even about that's what people don't understand. It's not even about America. America is really small. It's about the world. Yeah. My side of the fence, you're not black enough. You know what I mean? You're not black enough. It's like um, someone comes up to you and asks you, "What are you?" And I'm like, "I'm black." And they're like, "Oh, but no, really, what are you?" And I'm like, really, I'm black. Do you want to know my, my family's nationality? Yeah. But it's just never happened. Like, you're in between two spectrums. You're not black enough for your black people, but you're, you're black to white people. Yeah. So you're in that middle, and you're kind of trying to balance. Both, you know, both spectrums. You're, you're trying to figure out, where, where do I stand? Okay, because I have my people over here who I do identify with, but they're telling me, no, you're you're not black enough to be over there. You're not black enough. So you feel that 
think even today, like you haven't yeah. made the progress that we made. I, yes. I have felt progress. But does it still happen? Of course. Um, oh, you don't have a bad hair day. You can't have a bad hair day. I'm like, really? My hair is standing on top of my head. You really want to say that to me? <laughs> oh, no, you have good hair. No. Like, you know what I mean? So it still happens. And it, it saddens me. I don't think it's gotten better, to be honest. Um, I think we're definitely making strides, but I can definitely identify with you. And it's very isolating. And I think when dark-skinned women talk and light-skinned women talk, we are very connected in the sense that we go through the same things. It's just that it's always, oh, you're crying light-skinned tears. Oh, you don't have any problems. You have good hair. The other day, somebody comes up to me and she's like, oh, you don't have no problems. You Becky with the good hair. You know what I mean? So, so it's just like, again, the isolation in the community, again, it's like, you're not black enough, like you said, you know what I'm saying? But then a white person, you're not white at all. So suddenly everyone's wearing dashikis and everyone's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. And it's like, I grew up in Africa, like my mom's Kenyan, you know what I'm saying? Like, so for me, it's like, is this a fad or are y'all for real? Because to me, it looks like a fad. And I'm like, if it is, got to get it together, y'all. Because it's like, I feel, I feel proud of my African heritage. So it's like... It's hard for me to see all this like sudden dashiki movement. Like, I don't know. I agree. I felt the same way recently. <laughs> I, I, I get. I am very proud when I see women walk around with their natural hair, or you know, now the, the twists or the faux locks or the Molly, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, no, the hair is And great. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm like, I hope it's not just because it's a fad. It's because we actually are only who we are, what we created, and what we can do with our hair is that straight. really date white men per se but it's not because of their complexion it's just because culturally I cannot connect to them so I guess that's where I stand on that I feel like I'm equal opportunity I mean I'll date all races all shades all that good stuff but I've noticed that I have a particular affinity for like a nice dark skin woman with dress <laughs> together when I have that together it's like yeah, yeah. Like, that's it <laughs> Same here. Dark skin is not because I don't know. I feel like when I see it, I'm like, woo! So melanin. Yeah, it's yeah. just I just I think my soul does a little shiver. <laughs> I can agree with that. Like, uh -huh. And it's not because like, well, I'm gonna do this because you know for any other reason besides that it moves my soul. I just like yeah. women, man. <laughs> <laughs> True story. So I've, I've dated like from the the dark of the dark to the light of the light. And now my girlfriend is white. Um, and and to be honest, it's like, it's almost all the same. Like, like it, it, it's really not a big difference, but that could even be because she was raised in New York. So I really don't have a preference. I've like dated the entire spectrum. I'm, I'm not a whore. <laughs> I'm not here to like, give it to everyone. You know what I mean? It's just, I just had a really dark skinned woman. I've had a, a brown skin woman, a lighter skin woman, and now I have a white woman. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you have it a meaningful debate on light skin and dark skin, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope you enjoy this series of educating Afro Rose, the racist man hating one sided feminist bigot. I will continue to expose people like this in our community until they crawl back under the rock from which they came. <laughs>